ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage your compare for the evening, Jim. <laughs> hello, hello. I'm sorry we started so late. You're probably thinking, this isn't fair. I didn't come here to sit and wait for free comedy. But you know what? Public service announcement, announcement, the world isn't fair. And that's what I'm going to talk to you about today. I hate to bring the mood down, but that's sort of the theme for my compare. You're probably all thinking it about now, thinking that given the current sort of political situation, situation the world's a bit unjust, given the, uh, the climatic situation, just every single climate, political, climatic climate, climatic climate, climate, climate. Uh, I, what was I about to say? The world sucks, is what I was trying to say. And you know what, we already know this, don't we? Because we all learn that the world's, unless we're rich, we all learn that the world sucks when we're young. Uh, case in point, give me a cheer if you have any siblings. Uh, you look not too excited. You look like you're wooed, but more a sort of necessity. You don't sound excited. So how many siblings have you got? One. Uh, they, a little brother. How much littler? How much younger? <laughs> Fourteen. Six years. Fourteen. Do you ever six years? Do you ever fight with him? Oh yeah. So when it when you reached eighteen and he was twelve, was it like did the fight suddenly escalate when you got old enough to buy a gun? <laughs> no, it got, it, got, it got more intense because he hated that I was able to go out more in So, uh, what, kind of, what kind of fights did he get? Physical, verbal, emotional? Verbal, emotional, yeah. Oh, so, no, so, no actual. So, it was like, you left lasting no, I down. I my little brother. But I mean, got... I'm sure there's someone here who's probably punched their little brother. <laughs> Give me a cheer of you. Oh, <laughs> Hannah. <laughs> Hannah, you've, uh, well, you've punched your little brother. Tell me more. Assuming he's still around, <laughs> that would be a happy story. It's been a long time. Not, not, not since he went through puberty, he could probably knock me out when he wanted Was it because he was going through puberty that you punched him? <laughs> I can't remember why. I think he probably broke a toy I had or something. I punched him. So you can't, you, can't, you, you can't remember what the slight was, so it probably didn't deserve a punch. If you can't even remember it now, he probably didn't deserve to get punched in the face. <laughs> I remember fighting my younger sister. She's only two years younger than me. Um, but see, when we, we used to fight when we were kids. But I'd sort of favour a sort of chopping motion, maybe a, a, a slapping motion, maybe a, an occasional backhand. But she, she'd do this, like a cat. Because you see, she would never cut her fingernails, so she had claws. So after the fights, maybe, I mean, she'd walk off from it and probably not be hurting in like five minutes, but you see, I'd have, I would have battle scars, because I would have cuts down my arms, and they'd hurt for a good eight hours. The thing is, this is what I'm talking about is unfair. Parents don't understand. Because you see, when, I could, when, when my mum saw us fighting, she punished us equally, because the p parents are so keen to make us think that the world is fair and equal, which it's not, but they're so keen to make us think it is, that they dole out punishments equally, when really, the punishment should fit the crime, because you know what? She committed grievous bodily harm, and in a court of law, that can get you at minimum eight years. At most, I committed minor assault. <laughs> uh, what about, oh, uh, talking about injustice, uh, give me a cheer, uh, anyone here still bitter about the tensions they got at school? <laughs> oh, John, uh, just destroying all pretense that I don't know half the audience already. <laughs> um, hello, Jordan. Uh, how did, what was this detention that you still remember? It's the, um, I watched detention because the teacher thought I wasn't listening, so he asked me to repeat. He asked me to repeat what he just said, and I repeated what he just said, and he gave me detention anyway. Did you get it right, or did you assume what he said, you're a dick? I mean, I was being a dick, but I didn't get it right. Well, so, so how, what kind of detention was it? Was it like, full, did you miss all playtime? Pretty much. That teacher sounds like a dick. Yeah. Where is he now? Is he, one of those one, is he one of those teachers that you can sort of at least be glad he went to prison? If for nothing else, <laughs> Than he's no longer giving kids detentions or other. I'm not going to go down that route. Uh, anyone else with detentions they still feel bitter about? Yeah. Oh, you said. I mean, you sound like you're only half bitter. Maybe you think you deserved it. I mean, maybe I deserve it. I just really hate that teacher anyway. Go on. <laughs> I mean, is that, is the Romanian part relevant, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> is it really? Unless she, yeah, unless she sent you to yeah. Romania for the punishment. No, 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 no. <laughs> because the Romanian education system is really nailed and she thought she should suffer like she is. 
Right, okay. Well, I'm not going to go into details because I feel like you, you bear a lot of a big grudge against Romania and I don't want to open up that can of worms. <laughs> I once got called to the uh, head of year's office because uh, a, girl had told the, a girl had told the head of year that I'd been bullying her. Um, but what, see, what had actually happened is that this girl had called me fat, which I was at 13, but you know, have some tact. She called me fat, and, and, at which point my friends immediately leapt to my defence and responded by calling her fat in response, at which point she got sad and told the head of year that I'd been bullying her. Um, and the, weird, the weirdest thing is, this happened twice. Two different girls called me fat, got called fat back, and then told the, and then told the dude on it. I must be just a, sort of a magnet for prepubescent angst. I mean, I was pretty fat, so I probably just sort of... My gravitational pull probably threw it all in. <laughs> I think probably, um, I did wonder if the head of year just called me in to double check that I really was fat. Because, you know, if I wasn't, my friends would just be in dicks. But if I was, they're heroes, you know? <laughs> Always ready to stick up for the little man, or the, uh, big boy, in my case. <laughs> um, what, uh, what about, did anyone, have a, anyone remember class detentions? Yeah. The greatest injustice of them all. Some people talk, you don't, and then you miss your playtime, what's that all about? I remember once, uh, some ki we came in from a PE lesson, um, that's physical education to people who don't know letters. We came in from a physical education lesson, waiting to get into the changing rooms, and kids, and the kids decided to spit down the stairs. You know, kids are fucking idiots, they'll do anything to entertain themselves. And then one piece of spit landed on the PE teacher's clipboard. And boy was he angry, because he marched us all outside and stood us all against the wall until one of us owned up. No one said anything for two minutes. So one guy stood forward and said that in fact he had gobbed on the clipboard. And you know what? He hadn't gobbed on the clipboard. He hadn't even been there. I'm, I'm, you're hoping that right now I'm about to say that every one of us then owned up to spinning on the clipboard. We didn't. We let that guy burn. Um, I like to wonder where, I wonder where that guy is now. Probably walking into police stations claiming that he did the not claiming he... Probably walking into police stations, <laughs> claiming he did the Moors murders, or calling up the FBI and saying, nah, 9-11, that was me. I mean, in spirit, it was me. You should probably arrest me. On that note, I'm gonna, I'll introduce my next act very soon, but first I'm going to try and uh, just, uh, i got to explain a few rules. I, mean, I was going to say, be kept, go through, don't go through that door because it's loud, but I don't think there's enough people that that matters. <laughs> if you've got a phone, Turn it off or put it on silent. Either's fine, I won't know the difference. But if your phone is loud and it does go off, oh, no, it's off already. if your phone does go off, I will take it and I will answer it. And I don't care whether it's your mum calling to check on you, whether it's student finance or whether your cat at home has walked on the phone and called you up, I'm telling them you're dead. <laughs> and then I'm taking your phone and keeping it because dead people don't need phones. So keep it on silent, guys. Now, before I, before I pass over to our, our, my first act, Dean, I'm just going to try and raise the energy a little, because God knows we need it in these trying, <laughs> in these trying times. In these trying political times, we need it. So I'm going to, uh, talk to I didn't ask any names of people in the audience, so I'm just going to pretend I asked Hannah a name rather than knowing it. Hannah, I'm going to need you to, so you remember when you punched your brother because you were annoyed about something? Yeah. Take that anger, channel it into joy, and you're gonna just, I'm gonna count, I'm gonna say go, and then you're gonna just whoop and cheer, and it's gonna resonate around, and then I'm gonna introduce my next act, Dean Sam. Okay, so, and I remember the punching. Three, two, one, go! <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Dean Sam! Boom. Hello, so I was in Edinburgh Fringe a few years back, and there was a show on, and I really wanted to go see it. it promised to be a show like none other, Edinburgh Fringe. So I went in, and I thought, okay, this, is, this seems pretty good, pretty nice uh, space to sit down. And this is actually a pretty good sized audience. It's a shame that when the show started, it was um, just me <laughs> on my own. What made it even worse was that the show that was meant to be like none other turned out to be interpretive dance, very heavy interpretive dance. And they almost nodded out like at least twice in the three hours. But of course, if, if it's just you and the audience, you'd think, can I try and leave? Maybe. So I figured an escape plan involving the toilet. But unfortunately, the toilet was literally right behind, right behind the stage. So I get up to leave, and then they suddenly stop, because they followed the philosophy of if a tree falls and no one's there to hear it, does it make a sound? <laughs> so I went to the toilet for a while, waited five minutes, peeped out. They were still there looking directly at me. I closed the door again. 
Waited five more minutes, and then I left again. And I, this time I sat a few rows back. Later on in the show, they asked for a volunteer. I look around, who could it be? Oh, oh, it's me. So I get on stage, of course. I do this weird, weird interpretive dance that I had no clue what was going on. And this family of five walk in. And upon seeing my, dis my, my distraught face, it was something like, they just turned and left. <laughs> so the show eventually ends. They, they stand at the door with, the, of course, the tip jar, which is at least three foot high. It's like stacked up here in 1P coins. And as I walk towards them, they sort of block the way. And I'm like, oh, uh, yeah, thanks for the show, guys. Dig, it, dig into my pockets, get the change. And then they turn to me and go, you know, it's really nice to have our art appreciated by a fellow Mexican. <laughs> I'm not Mexican. <laughs> People get confused about this all the time. It's like my name, Dean Sang. Everyone's like, the second question everyone asks me is, how do you say your last name? Is it Tsang, Chang, Zhang, Zin? G spell Dean, D, E, 64, F, and it's just ridiculous. I mean, I checked YouTube once to make sure that I wasn't just crazy, but apparently I am. According to YouTube, it's pronounced Tsiung. Tsiung. Like some child labor battle gong. Dum 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 Tsiung. Dum 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 Tsiung. The worst one of all, though, was once this guy received a uh, uh, mail from me. Physical mail. My, my name was in size 12, Times New Roman font, sprawled across the bottom of the page. He sends an email for the attention of Mr. Wang. <laughs> Luckily, Mr. Wang worked in pensions upstairs, so I was actually quite safe. But I'm gonna, go and, I'm gonna go back a bit now and talk about this one time I was waiting to go to a job interview, and I was at this bus stop. Now, normally when you're at a bus stop, the, the people that come up to you to ask you a question normally go, oh, this, this weather's bloody horrible, innit? Or, oh, do you know what time the bus comes? But this guy comes up to me, he walks up, and he looks, looks me up and down, and he goes, what the fuck are you? <laughs> And I just turned to him like, Ex excuse me? And he goes, all right, mate, answer me this. Where are you from? And I go, oh, I'm from Blackpool. And he goes, no, no, no. Where are you really from? Now, no one lies about being from Blackpool. Let's, let's be honest here. I mean, Blackpool's the kind of place where you buy fish and chips, and if you want salt and vinegar, you just take it outside in the rain. Two kids can walk into a McDonald's, and 32 will come out. That is why teenage crime is so rampant. It's a lot like Middle Earth Blackpool, although instead of the Fellowship, you've got Steve and the gang from Bolton with inflatable knobs instead of a battle gear, just flailing it about in your face. <laughs> we have elves, trapped inside claw machines in Silcox Fun Palace. Silcox Fun Palace. Bessie, where do you take the kids today? Oh, I took them to Silcox Fun Palace. What, what a crazy name is that? Anyway, I'm on the bus. And the funny thing is, is that this man is sort of having a mini seizure of anger every time the bus goes below 10 miles per hour. And it takes at least 30 minutes to try and get to the town centre. So thankfully, after a long while, he gets off. And I'm like, thank goodness. But unfortunately, I have to get off the, second, the, the next stop over. So I jump off. I walk past McDonald's. But the mitosis is underway, so I just kind of ignore that. <laughs> I go to Greg's. I buy myself a sausage roll. And then uh, I, 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 I go to the building. I sit down. 10 minutes before 12. The interview's meant to begin directly on 12 o'clock. It's meant to be all good. It's all fine. 12 o'clock, guy comes along. Oh no, sorry mate, I just didn't mean to bother you. Not the interview, that's fine. 10 minutes later, guy comes along. Sorry mate, it'll be 10 more minutes. And then 10 minutes after that, he comes with a sandwich. He's like, sorry mate, it's gonna be 40 more minutes. And he leaves again. And then finally, an hour and 10 minutes later, he comes along with the racist man at the bus stop in a suit. <laughs> so we go up into the interview room. I sit down and he goes, all right mate, what's your name? And I go, my, my name's Dean. All right, Gene. I'm gonna ask you a few questions, is that all right? So I take a sip and he asks me the first question. So, why did you apply for this job? Now I hate this kind of question because we all know the answer why you apply for a job like that. It's because you want to make a living. Like if I was to go up to you, sir. Sir, what's your name? Jake. If I was to go, Jake, why did you apply to be a SpongeBob SquarePants mascot? Oh, SpongeBob. That's the right answer. <laughs> So it moves on to the second question immediately, which is, so do you like working with kids? Now there's, there's two ways to answer this question, right? There's the right way and the wrong way. The right way involves looking at him in the eye and going, yes, I've got this massive certificate here that says I'm qualified to, to you know, work with children. Um, I've also had no instance in the past. I've got a clean record. It's all good. The wrong way to answer it, however, is to look at the person you're interviewing in the eye with a wild grin on your face <laughs> while your leg sort of taps against the table. <laughs> 
And then the next question, he goes, so what's your biggest strength? Now, I don't know why they ask these questions because they don't really remember. They're not going to go in six months down the line going, oh, there's Dean, that guy, he said he was optimistic, but he's frowning now, the lying bastard. <laughs> Get him in my office. <laughs> so after the interview concludes, I'm up to the next stage, which involves filling out this blank piece of paper. Well, it's not blank, it's got stuff on it. Um, <laughs> to declare your, rate, your, your, your gender, your religion, and your race. Gender, fine. Religion, done. Now, race is a bit difficult. I'm not white, okay. Uh, Asian? No, I'm not pure Asian. Uh, white Asian? Oh, I'm not even that. So there's this other box just lingering at the bottom right of the corner. And it's like, if I tick that, the, the amount of existential dread is going to hit me through the roof. So just looking, while I'm looking down at this, old Wrinkles McGee from the bus stop, he's like leering over me because he finally gets the result. The answer, where is he really from? Go on, tell me, tell me. So I get my pen. Next to black, I write pool. <laughs> I tick pool, black pool, tick that and hand him the paper with a smug smile on my face. So, event so he shakes my hand limply. He says, thanks for the intimate, we'll let you know in about two to three weeks. And six months later, uh, I found, um, when, when he found, I didn't get the job, um, unfortunately, but judging by the guy who got arrested for child handling in the SpongeBob SquarePants mascot costume, you can kind of guess who did. I've either been Dean Jang, Dean Seung, or Dean Sang. Thank you. <laughs> You, sir, when did you first realise the world was unjust? Uh, at the age of six. Usual age? What, what happened? Uh, Keep it light. Give me... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> um, as long as it's not a death in the family. No, um, that was seven. The, uh, <laughs> my teacher gave all the rest of the class a lollipop, but she gave me and somebody else because she'd run out some chalk. Chalk? <laughs> Chalk instead of lollipops? It's just what she had, and it was colourful. I was happy with it at the time. Well, I mean, to be honest, chalk is the gift of writing. And you know what you can do with writing? You can draw a million lollipops. Maybe not a million. Chalk is shit. It'll run out. But I mean, you can draw at least more than one lollipop. What about you? What about you? Chloe, have a Chloe. I'm just not even bothering to ask what name. Chloe, uh, when did you realise the world was unjust? Um, at birth. Birth? <laughs> um, in, in, uh, amazingly cognitively intelligent, I mean, you can't be cognitively. Um, well, <laughs> Screw this bit. <laughs> Carry on, Chloe. Save me, save me, Chloe. Um, my, my, after I was born, my sister said, um, can we take mummy home but leave that here? I didn't remember that. <laughs> well, I didn't remember it. I it just was get so, told it, it was like, such every cruel. time that my sister so, is mean to me and mum backs me up. Your mom, so you have to call your mum in to back you up when you're does it does it happen a lot? Do you get bullied by your sister um, a lot? Sometimes, like it's sort of equal on both sides, but I'm just better at getting people to support me. Right, so what you you're saying you do bully, but you have the sort of Yeah, but you have you get back different, isn't it? No one backs your sister up, they all back you up. No. Maybe you deserve to be bullied, Chloe. <laughs> I mean I'm just, I'm just throwing that out there. Um, what about you, John? When did you realise the world was unfair? Well, I mean, I was like really young. My cousin ripped the top off a stress ball shaped like a deer. <laughs> <laughs> you had a stress ball shaped. I mean, you had a stress ball shaped like a shaped. Right, and he gave what well, he gave it to you like a memento to remember. No, no, I was nicked in his house. Oh, you nicked it. I didn't nick it. No, really. <laughs> right. No. There's so many layers to this story. John. So I, was, I was in his house. You had a stolen stress ball. Yes. It looked like a beer bottle. Bearing in mind you were a child, so you shouldn't even have that kind of thing. Yeah. And then, you, what, you thought he'd drink it? You ripped the top off? No, she just ripped the top off. Oh, and, right, then and then I got blamed for it. Oh, right. And she said to tell them that you'd done it. Yeah. Do you ever, did anyone ever lie to their parents that their, that their sibling had done something bad that they'd done? I still do it. Do they still buy it? Because as we've, as we've gathered, you're the favourite child. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not at home as much, so... I set up uh, I set up the scale electrics, which I wasn't meant to set up and blame my baby sister. They didn't buy it. <laughs> um, you know, I'll tell you when I've realised the world was unjust. I was, much like you guys, about seven, eight, was in school, and I watched my friend pull out the chair from the boys' and next room. He fell down, landed on his bum, ha <laughs> ha, what fun! Childhood japes. I did the same thing to the boy next to me, falls down, cracks his head on the table. 
Because the world is unfair, people. You can't just do the same thing two times in a row and expect the same results. Because we live in a quantum reality. We live in an unfair world where you can never expect to get what you deserve, especially if what you, unless what you deserve is cracking your head on the table. I cried when that boy got hurt. I mean, so did he, probably more than I did. But I mean, I cried too. Uh, while you think of me crying, think of yourself laughing at my next act. <laughs> Either laugh at me crying or laugh at our next act. Because I'm, I'm going to introduce my next act, Jay. I'm Jane. Uh, as you can see, I'm Chinese, um, not British Chinese or something else. Yes, the Chinese made in China. So <laughs> I've said it, you know, it's hard to, for you to buy something not made in China now. Um, so I have, it is my first, first time come to this country and I'm really curious about like, what you British people think about Chinese people. Anyone? <laughs> <laughs> next to a British guy, and he started to ask me questions. So he was like, are you Chinese? Um, do all your Chinese eat your dog? <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> I mean, I love my dog. Only eat a dog of our neighbors. <laughs> Actually, which flavor do you prefer? The one with Sichuan chili or the one with noodle? I can give you the uh, recipe if you want. <laughs> Then I think he's a little bit afraid, but this bird gentleman keep on asking me the second question. Is that true that some Chinese men are really obsessed with women with tiny feet? No offense, but since you have the tradition of foot binding. <laughs> you see, he's quite polite. He even said no offense. So, <laughs> so I replied to him, no. And actually, this tradition has been banned like from almost 100 years ago. And how did you know that? So you tell me, who is the man obsessed with tiny feet? <laughs> <laughs> then here comes the third question. So do all Chinese know Kung Fu? What a nice question. Yes, have been practiced for three years. How you want to die? <laughs> okay. So I'm Chinese, and I grew up in one of the greatest communist society in the world. So um, I, I would really love to share how it feels living in a communist society. So in our country, we have only one official news channel, and the name is quite interesting, CCTV. <laughs> and it's, quite, it's a good name. No one wants to pee in front of that, right? Now, in my high school, yeah, uh, every student are required to watch this CCTV channel every day when we have our lunch. It's like when you are busy eating, then suddenly a voice comes. The, the great soldier of People Republic of China just saved 50, more than 50 lives from the flood. Then you think, that's none of your business. Then you keep on eating. <laughs> then suddenly another voice came. The GDP growth rate of China remains 8%. Still none of your business. Then you eating. I think most of you believe this kind of like using the media or the news to make citizens more patriotic. This strategy didn't work. Yes, I agree with you. But after I graduate, I realized it actually worked. So it was a midnight when I turned on the TV and it happened to be the CCTV news. And at that moment, only uh, one idea came to my mind. 
I'm so hungry. <laughs> what, <laughs> what are we gonna eat for lunch today? <laughs> you see, it's a communism version of Pavlov's dog. <laughs> <laughs> so after I graduate, I came to UK and tried to explore another culture. And may, somebody may ask, why Lancaster? There are a few reasons. Firstly, I'm poor, so I didn't get to London. <laughs> <laughs> Secondly, <laughs> they said Lancaster is quite a nice place. People here are really friendly. And as a child being rejected for more than 20 years, I really want to come to a place that welcomes me. <laughs> so I came here. Yes, the people here really like hospitality. So I still remember the first time I got on the 2A. Yes, the bus was second floor and a native tried to like, learn some Chinese from me. <laughs> so he was like, so, are you Chinese? Can you teach me how to say hello beauty in Chinese? So I think he is quite interesting and I decided to teach him some Chinese for free. Uh, in case some of you may be interested in Chinese culture, you can just follow me, okay? The hello beauty in Chinese is <laughs> Cho Sha. Okay. Does anyone want to try? Okay. Do you want to try? I can teach you. The whole thing in Chinese is Ni. Cho. Cho. Sha. Sha. Yes, try again. Ni Cho Sha. Yes, well done. Okay. Then I will keep on like telling my stories. Then this friendly gentleman tried to introduce the local area to me. So he, he's like, um, so is that your first time come to Lancaster? I'm living here, so I can introduce the local area to you. I'm really glad he said so. So I said, yes, please, sir. And he started like, um, have you seen that corner right behind the barber shop with white slogan? Yes, sir. You see, it is a prostitution area of Lancaster. <laughs> I said, you can never see a prostitute in a communist society just at China. So I definitely should know more about that. <laughs> so I started to ask him a question. So, so can you tell me how you British tell a lady whether she's a prostitute? He answered, full of confidence. You just walk past that corner and see some woman almost naked and dancing with smile. That's it. <laughs> uh, yes, I see. But can I ask how much? <laughs> um, 30 to 40 pounds if you wish to know. You see, 30 pounds is quite a vague answer. So I keep on asking him, is 30 pounds Per night, per hour, or he's a little bit impatient, but he answered me eventually. <laughs> of course, one time, young lady, I can come three times an hour. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, good for him. <laughs> Why don't he just start up his own business? This country count on the citizens just like him after Brexit. <laughs> Okay, I'm almost done here, and quick thing before I, I'm leaving, and I want to ask, is anyone still remember the Chinese? Yes. Ni <laughs> <laughs> Well, it's really good. You see, the Chinese is not really difficult, right? Uh, please just uh, follow me, okay, everybody? So, the hello beauty in Chinese is Ni Ni Cho Sha. Try again, okay? The hello beauty in Chinese is. Okay, and there's another thing I didn't told you. And well, the sentence you just repeat, the real meaning of it actually is What are you looking at? Your chink with tiny feet. <laughs> okay. You guys have been great, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Jay. We've got one more act. We've got one more act coming up, but we're going to have a 10 minute interval first. Go and get a drink, go to the loo, uh, call any friends you've got hiding to come out. Uh, uh, so, yeah, 10 minute interval. Come back in, don't leave. See you soon. <laughs>